The Steelers. The Rooney family. Family owned. Heinz Ketchup. Hermany Brothers. Iron City Beer. They got their own wing in Canton, folks. <laughs> Despite being one of the most storied franchises in sports, the Joe Gillum legacy sadly represents the missing pages from the team's glorious past. Usually when the story of the Pittsburgh Steelers is told, Gillum's contributions are often ignored, which serves as the primary impetus of why I must share his story with the masses. This was a story that had kind of been lost to history. Uh, those familiar with the first part of Joe's story might have wondered whatever became of him. Others might not have known the story at all. It's a story of maybe hope and failure. It's a story that should be told. The story is so unique. And I think, you know, what would be great in this story is to show the pictures of what he could do back then compared to the pictures of what quarterbacks are doing now. If you start to see that, it starts giving you the visualization as far as, wait a second, this guy really was somebody special. I thought that he was the quarterback of the now and in the future of Pittsburgh. I actually looked at him and saw a guy that I thought was better than me. I've never thought that, and I actually thought that of Joe. Joe was a tremendously talented guy. With Joe playing the way he was playing and, and the things he brought to the table as far as a quarterback, there's no question I thought he could have won, won multiple Super Bowls. Could Joe have won Super Bowls? Yes, he could have. Joe is probably three decades ahead of where he should be. I mean, he because where he was, I mean, he's the perfect quarterback now. Watch me! Watch me! I got it! Watch me! I got it! Hey! I got something that makes me want to shout. I got something that tells me... When he ran out there wearing number 17, I said to myself, if he could play the National Football League, I can too. I came in with Joe Gillum, and I was just amazed to see this skinny kid throw this football. I could not believe his talent. I did not understand the ramifications of, of who I was and what I was doing and what I represented as being the first. It got so bad that, that I thought Joey was soon to be dead if he kept abusing drugs like he was. Uh, and so I wrote a column telling people that we should still stop giving Joey money, that all Joey was doing, that most of what Joey was doing was using the money to buy drugs, and that, that we were helping to kill him. I hear people say, boy, you ought to be sitting up there with Bradshaw on TV. I'm where I'm supposed to be. It was a bad time because I was conscious and aware of what I was doing. And what I did was beg, panhandle, that was the lowest I'd gotten. Sad, just so sad because so much talent was there, so much of a good person was there, and to see it go like that is tough. I understand uh, exactly you know, what happened to Joe and, 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 and uh, 
I just think it was a shame what happened to him because he could have been one of the great quarterbacks to play this game if he would have been given the same opportunities as others. He gave me my job back. I didn't earn it back. That's another thing. I didn't beat him out. Before there was a Doug Williams, there was a Joe Gillum. Before there was a Warren Moon, Joe Gillum was a quarterback in the National Football League. Before there was a $100 million contract for, uh, for Donovan McNabb, there was a Joe Gillum. And those guys would not have had the opportunity had there not been a Joe Gillum.